Aloha, welcome to week two of our Lala Boutique Tis the Season Quilt Along. This week we are going to be working on the motifs or, that go around the letters that are in the center of your panel. Last week we did all the letters, we did the snowflakes, so you should be getting kind of a feeling of working with the Chanel at Blooming Bias. We're going to start with the green, kind of the pale green leaves and the white flowers that are mostly in the corners around the edges of, of the panel. And we're going to be working with a couple of things again this week that you'll be familiar with by now. Um, I, especially on the things that we're working on today, the, the design motifs that we're working on today that have a lot of turns and a lot of detail to them. Um, this is going to be your new favorite thing. <laughs> is the glue stick, the water-soluble glue stick. So, you know, I have a couple of those handy um, to work with as you, as you work on these flowers and the um, leaves and, and the, the boughs. And we're going to start with the green leaves um, and the stems of the white flowers. And we want to do the leaves first. I like to work from the back forward because then if we have things like the stems they're going to go over the top of where we end our leaves. So we'll do the leaves just by themselves first. And working with the glue stick, I'm just going to go around the edge of that entire leaf, trying to hold it in place so you can still see what I'm doing. So I've just got glue on all those edges. And then I'm starting down where it hooks onto the stem. And you just want to go just beyond that edge. And when I get to a point of that leaf, I'm going to flip it and immediately start to shape that around the curve. And just make sure that edge is covered. Then I'm going to flip it again right at the point and pull that down so that it's just past that edge. Kind of press those corners a little bit as you go around. I want to flip the point again. And you can see as I come around down from that point how I am just easing that around that curve. You want to keep the lines of de the design um, Imagine that this is actually an applique instead of printed, and you know you're just trying to cover that edge of what you know what would be an applique, but it, it's that much easier because it's printed on, so you're not going to have a raw edge that you have to worry about covering. You just want to make sure the line is covered. I have all the leaves glued down. All the chenille is glued down around the edge of my design. And now we have it at the machine. I have the machine slightly shorter stitch length to 2.0. And I'm just going to stitch down the center of that tape. I'm going to come around the curve and come to a point. I'm just going to leave it needle down and turn it and come around the next curve. Bring that around to the top, needle down, turn it. And the entire time I'm just, all I'm doing is stitching down the center of the tape. And I'm going to do that on each one of my leaves. And I'm putting the leaves on before I do the stem. And you'll see why I've done that when we come back to do the stems.
going to add the stems. All the leaves are stitched down, and you can see that I've brought those leaves down into the stem. I'm going to start with the shorter stem. That's the one that's going to be, you know, more in the background. Start with a straight edge up at the top of this. This is easy enough to stitch down that you shouldn't need to glue this in place because you can just lay that down as you go on that line. It's very easy to just follow that line down to the stem. Cut it off so that it's going to go a little bit into that stem. Come down to that end. Just end that. And then we'll go up to the top. Go from the top to, the, I like to go from the top to the bottom. It's kind of, I get that where I want going into the flower. Going into the flower just a little bit. The flower chenille, it will cover that up. And then we're just going to follow, and as I'm following that down, I'm making sure that I have covered the ends of those leaves so that those are going to blend into the stem and it's all just going to be one, you'll have one continuous piece when that blooms, when it's washed and dried. And make sure I come down past the end of that last one, end it off, and then I can just cut that at the end. Now that we have the leaves and the stem stitched down, we are going to add the chenille to the flower, the white flower. And this uh, on this flower, we're going to add chenille around the other edge. And again, I start on the bottom and I'm using my glue stick and just giving myself a nice sticky base to add that chenille to. Once you get used to using this glue stick method, it's going to make your application of chenille so much easier and faster regardless of, you know, whether you're doing it on a panel or whether you're doing it on raw edge applique, you're going to find this very, uh, very fast and easy way to do it. So I'm just going to start at one of the points. And the, the white chenille is almost sheer enough that I can see, I can see that white edge underneath my chenille as I'm going around. So it's really easy to make sure I've got my edge of my chenille at just a little bit past the edge of that petal. And I'm just going to bring that around. And when I'm working on small, you know, on things like the flowers and the snowflakes, I can put that glue stick, apply that at the machine. And do it as I as I go along. And when I get when I get down to one of these little points, I'm just flipping that and coming back around on the next curve. You can see all the spots where I have flipped it and brought it around. I like to work with just a couple of yard piece of my chenille at a time rather than worrying about it coming off the roll. Sometimes it gets twisted and tangled, but if you're just working with a yard at a t yard or two at a time, it's um, much, much easier to flip and manipulate than if, you le and then if you're trying to work on the whole roll at once. So now we've got our white chenille around the edge of our flower. We're ready to stitch. I'm just stitching down the center of the tape. Holding it flat as I go around these curves. And this is, you know, this is really easy to do once you've got that glued in place. All I have to do is, you know, stop, every, uh, you know, every once in a while and just turn 
my panel when I get to where that flip is. I just do a needle down the same way I did on the sage green leaves. And stitch around my curve. You'll do the small flower the same way. Exactly the same way as the large one. You're just going to have a little bit tighter curves. But you'll just flip when you get to the point and turn your turn your panel as you go. to add kind of almost like a little pom-pom in the center of these flowers to just give that the puff that it needs in the center of the flower and I'm working with um, just two about three quarters of an inch pieces it doesn't have to be exact um, pieces of the 5 8 inch wide pale pink is what I'm using for the center and I've cut two pieces and I'm going to turn one and put it on top of the other so that I have them just kind of crossed over each other. They're going to lap a little bit. And I'm going to place that right in the center of my flower. Stitch down the center of that tape. And secure the ends going one direction. And then I'm going to come backwards to the center of that. And if I have to lift my needle to find my center again, I can do that. And then I'm going to go forward on this one and all the way back to the end and secure it so I have an X I've just made a cross in the center of those tapes and when that blooms all these little pieces in the center are going to fluff up and you're, it's going to be like a little pom-pom in the center of your flower the next thing that I'm going to be doing is the green leaves and the berries that go around the outside of the quilt. And when I did my panel, um, I did all the motifs that were the same at one time. So I did all the, the green leaves and the white flowers all the way around the quilt. And then I came back and did the green leaves with the berries all around the quilt. And I think you'll find it easier to, to work with the same color and just you know, completely do all of those motives at one time. We're going to lay down the green chenillette around these, the green leaves that have the berries at the top. And this is very similar to the, the sage leaves that we did on the white flowers. This is actually going to be a little bit faster and a little bit easier because um, I, we don't have as many turns. We don't have all the turns and the points. So you've done the leaves that are, you know, going to be more difficult already. Those are, you know, a little bit trickier to lay down. On this one, all I have to do is use my glue stick around that outside edge and then lay this again down just enough to cover that edge. And all we do is come up to the point. Make sure you've got your point covered. Hold that down while you start to come back down around and just kind of hold it in place as you go. Ease it down there and then cut it off. have the chenille glued down around the leaves and we've come to the machine and I like to go from right to left so I am just going to go down the center of the cake again just to 
the same on all these applications. We're just stitching down the center of the tape. These leaves are very easy because we just were coming down a, just a little bit of a curved line, flipping it at the top. And we don't have to do a lot of manipulating with the panel as we stitch these leaves down. And again, I'm putting the leaves down first. And then on this one, I can actually just stitch up this stem a little ways. I don't have to cut any threads or begin with start and stop. I can just stitch up the center of that stem because I'm going to be covering that up with chenille. And it's just that, you know, one, one thing that you can eliminate, not have to worry about clipping threads and starting and stopping. We'll just continue around all of these leaves until we have them all stitched down. Okay, we have all the leaves stitched down. This is going to be exactly the same as we did on the leaves for the white flowers. And we're, now we're going to add the stem. And we're, we're going to start up at the top where the berry is. Secure that. And then just lay this down as we stitch. If you're still new at chenille and you feel more comfortable gluing this down, you can certainly do that. But because this is just a straight line and this gives me a little more control as I go over my the ends of my leaves to make sure that those are all completely covered and and part of part of the stem and bring that down to the end. Now we're going to add the berries at the top of these leaves. And I'm just going to apply this glue down at the machine as I work. These are um, take a minute to do these because it's a little bit tighter turn, but you're going to do the same thing that you've done around your other curves and just start at the stem and just curve this just a tiny bit at a time around that berry so that you can keep a nice tight circle. And bring, bring that around, back around at the base of the stem. Overlap it, a, you know, a good quarter of an inch before you cut it off. And if you want to go back in there and just put a little bit of glue where that started, then that will hold that in place so you can sew it down. these berries in place and we're just going to um, go a little bit slower so that we can turn this as we go. Just cut a little bit of a tighter circle but you're just going to stitch down the center of that tape again around this little circle and this is this is really going to make these berries stand out. When this is washed and dried and this all blooms, you're really going to see these berries.
last thing we have to do around the edge of the quilt is the pine boughs. And um, these are going to be chocolate. And we're going to do those. Everything is very similar. We're just, it's just a slightly different application. Right now I'm just going to do this stem, this stem on the side. Our, we're working with just straight lines. It's going to go very quickly and very easily. But again, I'm going to use my, my glue stick. I'm going to do just this one stem for you to learn the technique. Then it'll be easy for you to go back and do the, the rest on this cluster. But again, uh, very similar to the leaves, I'm going to do these pieces that come out first. And then I'll do the center last. So I'm going to do maybe, I'm going to glue maybe, maybe three or four at a time. Uh, don't get too far ahead of yourself. You don't want that glue to dry and um, not hold your chenille it down. So I'm just going to start a little bit past the end just so that you make sure that those ends are covered. When it comes down to the stem, just flip it and kind of watch where your end is and clip that off. And you're going to do that on each stem, on each little piece that comes across. And and they're gonna vary in vary in length and that's what makes that's what makes it so interesting and so lifelike. And and this design is just about the same width as the bias, so it's easy to lay that down over those lines and just flip it and come up the other other side. Every once in a while you'll find one that isn't directly lined up with the other side and in that case you can cut it off and then do a separate piece. But on this particular one they all seem to be pretty much lined up with the other side. So that makes it just really fast and easy to do. You can see how fast that goes down using the glue stick. And I'm not if you tr you can do this at your machine, but it's so much faster and easier just to glue this down and then go back to your machine and sew it in place. Okay, now I'm going to lay stitch all these little V's down into place. One of the questions that um, we get a, a lot online is thread color. Um, do I need to match the thread color of the chenille that I'm laying down? If you've been following along with us um, today on all these different sections of the quilt, you've noticed that I've just been using white thread on everything. And when this blooms, that's usually what I do, is just pick one color of thread and that's what I work with. Because when this is um, washed and dried, it blooms up around my stitch. I'm not going to see my stitching. So, and, and it's much easier for you to see which is nice too as, as far as stitching this down in place because I've got white thread you can see where my stitches are and you will notice too as I'm stitching this down I'm basically going down the center of the tape but it doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't have to be exact because when this blooms it just all blooms up around it I mean you don't want to get way off to the edge or anything but if you're close to the middle you're going to be fine. And I'm not going to clip my thread each time I go stitch down one of these V's. So I'm just stitching down one side, turning it, stitching up the other side. I do secure it at the end just with a couple of stitches, bring my needle up, and turn it 
and then I'll go I'll go back and clip those threads later, both on the front and the back. Okay, the last thing today is to add the stem to this branch. And we're going to start at the top, secure it, and just bring that down through the center of the V's with a stitch down the center. One of the things that you will notice too as you're working, and it really stands out on this chocolate because there's such a contrast, as you're working with a glue stick, you're going to see that it's, it's you're going to have some residue beyond your chenille and that absolutely doesn't matter. We're just going to, at the very end, we'll talk about washing and drying the quilt. And one of the things we'll talk about is the washing process and using a little detergent to wash that right away. And down to the end of your stem. And that's how easy and fast those branches are going to go. We've really had a lot of fun this week on this part of the, the quilt along because what we've done is taken all of these beautiful designs that Vanessa has created ar around the letters and turned them into appliques. Um, we've, with, the, with the flowers and, and the petals, they're so beautifully printed on the panel, but when you add the chenille, it, now her designs are going to look like appliques when your quilt is finished. And I think you'll really enjoy that. So this, this week you're going to sp spend your time doing your flowers, doing your leaves and berries, um, working on the pine boughs. So there's a, there's a lot to do this week, but I think you're going to find that it's going to be fast and easy to do. One of the things that we're going to be doing online on Instagram and on Facebook is putting up some posts and some places where if you have if you're working on your panel during the week and you have any questions just go to our um, Instagram page and put your questions on the post and we'll get right uh, get back to you as fast as we can with answers but I think um, you can also go back and revisit the video and watch things again so enjoy this week um, next week we will be quilting